Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for Sinoshore's Expert Advice Aesthetic Technology Webinar Series. This is about the 10th uh, webinar that Sinoshore has delivered over the last few weeks. And today we're going to be focusing on surgical aesthetics and skin cancer using RF radio wave surgery. So effectively using a radio frequency device in replacement of your scalpel for a wide range of uh, common procedures that you'll be doing um, as part of your skin cancer business and also as part of your aesthetics business. Um, just a few shout outs before we get started. Good to see you Akshay, thanks for joining us. Karen, thanks for joining us. Um, we have a few people who already have uh, RF uh, technology, they already have the Elman Surgitron device. Uh, and we also have a few people on here who are probably just interested in learning about uh, what the modality of radio frequency is in respect to surgical aesthetics. So welcome everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Christian Bell, I uh, work at Sinoshore Australia. And today we're gonna be uh, taking some advice from Dr. Ben Chan. Now, Ben uh, is just going to be on audio today. If you want to say hello, Ben. Hello. Ben um, forgot to take off his pyjamas today, ladies and gentlemen, so I decided to cut him off the webcam. I hope you appreciate that. So, ladies and gents, we're going to run for about 45 minutes today. Uh, I understand a lot of you will be on your lunch break, and I'm going to try and make this as entertaining as possible for you, okay? So there'll be some dance routines built in. Um, ladies and gents, uh, in the top right corner of your screen, there's a little bubble with a question mark in it. And if you want to at any point, you can click on that and you'll be able to ask questions and they'll pop up just for me only. So no one else can see uh, the questions that you'll type. So please fire away. Even if you want to ask one now, I'll put it out there. What do you want to learn from today? Is there anything specific that you'd like us to cover? So please don't be shy. Let's make this interactive. Um, click on that, on that comment icon with the question mark. Write in your questions and we'll keep this interactive as we carry on. So, ladies and gents, let me just go back a little bit, ladies and gents. Um, although we're going to be talking about radio frequency today, you should know that Sinoshore is the world's largest manufacturer of medical aesthetic devices, and we have the longest running history in this industry. Laser companies came around in uh, the mid to late 90s, with Sinoshore being the first and longest standing in this industry. Guys, what a funny scenario we have been in in the last few months. Um, clearly, we're coming out of it all now, and I'd love to get your feedback, certainly from Dr. Ben Chan, about how business has been once, once we've all resumed. But certainly, some of the biggest changes that have occurred have been this. You know, this method of interaction has just been expedited um, so quickly, and and here we are doing so many webinars and interacting with you for training and promotional activities um, via the internet. And it was always available, right? We could have been doing this 10 years ago, but I think you need that push to get it going. And, and um, certainly Sinoshore have, have really uh, uh, taken, it, taken it on really quickly and, and we've been delivering some great webinars. So um, guys, this quote struck me because it's come up a lot. You know, you watch the news, they're bringing up versions of this quote. Everywhere I look, this, this concept is, um, is around and really it's relevant to this current situation, right? We have industries that have totally shut down uh, and and they've had to adapt and change and, and do things really quickly in order to survive. And um, I think it's also relevant to medical technology in that, you know, there are ways of doing things and then there is technology that uh, can improve the way we do things or can give you additional tools to help you do things better. And uh, certainly radio wave surgery has been around for a long time. 
um, and it it is absolutely uh, well used in Australia. I have literally hundreds of clients uh, who who are using the Elman Surgitron uh, or doing some type of of radio wave surgery. Um, and but there are still so many who who don't. And it's amazing because the the doctors who do use it will say things like, it's like giving a caveman a box of matches or or giving a builder from the 50s a nail gun. Um, the, this tool and this modality uh, for skin surgery is absolutely uh, the next level. And yet there are still so many doctors out there who perhaps um, uh, are a bit ignorant to it or, or perhaps don't understand the benefits. And that's what today's about. So uh, again, thank you for joining us. We've got about 20 doctors on the line and um, we're gonna hear from, from Dr. Ben Chan. So Ben, how are you today? I'm good. Yeah, what are you up to today? <laughs> not, not exactly waiting for your, for your uh, webinar. Lovely. Time, you know, you talk about technology, right? The yep. difference is we don't get foods and drinks. So maybe you can send a parcel up next time. True, I'm gonna do it like, like an evening meeting style thing, we'll get everyone at dinner and they can sit in their pajamas at home and watch watch our webinars. Or lunchtime, you can send out some freebies. I'm going to do that. It's going to cost me a lot, but I'll do it. Um, save, save the hotel, please. That's true. That's true. And you know, and it's more convenient, right? Like here we are at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday, and and we're doing a, a workshop together. So you know, I just think this medium's great, and, and it'll keep going. And, and you, you've got medical businesses as well as aesthetic businesses. How, how, um, how is that tracking now in terms of operation and, and everything being back on track? Um, what's the GP business side, the medical side hasn't stopped and is still much the same. Uh, we're lucky ones, one of the ones who haven't been affected at all. Um, even though we do about 20% telehealth, I'm keeping track on that. Um, but they haven't slowed down. I understand that technology has slowed down a lot, despite that we have technology on site. And I've also heard radiology has slowed down a lot. So it's been affected. So I was wondering where have been to all the patients, you know, somehow we were not sick before or what. Um, but it's still our aesthetics, as you know, in Victoria, we only just started opening this week, but we were lucky. I think my management team was good in the sense that they were promoting it. Uh, specials right through this, although we were not able to be hands-on, but they were promoting in readiness for us coming back uh, to do it. So now we're fairly fully booked for, for a few weeks, purely right. because of the management system. Excellent. So yeah, in Victoria, we've been able to practice again since Monday. So this is the fourth day back in, in three months. Uh, and how was your business in terms of bookings for aesthetic treatments? Uh, like I say, we're booking it for three or four weeks ahead now because of the promotions that we did earlier. So we haven't slowed down. Of course, there was no cash flow for three months, you know, uh, it's dripped down a little bit. But I, in terms of demand, well, we suddenly got the demand back. Let's see what happens forward after this period. Great. And, you know, one of the um, services or one of the types of, of procedures you do in in your aesthetics and in your medical business is skin surgery yeah i'm very much a dermatological uh, procedural person uh, i'm not talking about botox and fillers but i'm my main love and my main passion is actually dermatology surgery uh that we are getting into in a few minutes and also anything to do with skin from an aesthetic point of view rather than botox and fillers of course we train doctors as well but it's more skin related it could be uh, patient present with uh, can be acne scars, can be uh, pigmented lesions or, or things to be cut out. So that's my passion. Excellent. And um, and you're based in Melbourne and you've got multiple medical centres and aesthetic businesses. Yes, we and, have about. Mm. Okay. And um, and tell me, so so you know, I mentioned before radio wave devices and radio frequencies been around for a long time. When did you first start using an Elman Surgitron? I think about. I was just thinking about that. It has to be at least twelve to fifteen years ago now, and yeah. I'm still using exactly the same unit. 
and luckily for me this unit is so robust by the way i have no no commercial interest in this uh, my passion is teaching and spreading the word of education uh, i have absolutely zero commercial interest you don't even buy me lunch for this um, so uh, it's something i've used and it's been very robust system and you i think it even predates you you say how antiquated my system is but it works yeah agreed you know i'll travel the country talking to doctors who use the elman devices and a lot of them still have uh early 90s models and knobs and dial surgitrons and they don't fail uh and they do exactly what they do today as they did 15 20 years ago so they are a very solid system the the technology is actually not as complicated as a laser uh, which is a good thing in that um, the device will last a long time, doesn't require servicing, uh, and and as you say, you've got the same one as you had 15 years ago. Yeah, it's a very robust system and no servicing, which is a big plus. Great. So I thought what we do, Ben, is um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the science of radio frequency um, today and, and how the modality itself works, because there are a few surprises that people, um, I think, will, will appreciate uh, when it comes to what you're actually doing with radio frequency and how it interacts with the body. Um, and then we talk about the most common procedure done with a Surgitron in Australia, which is cosmetic uh, mole removal or, or the removal of, of benign skin lesions. Uh, it's by far the most common procedure done with the device. And although uh, radio wave surgery is used by vets, it's used by plastic surgeons, dermatologists, GPs, skin cancer physicians, it is so widely used. Um, but again, the most common request that I get is, is for the device is to undertake uh, dermatological services, especially uh, the removal of benign skin lesions. So we're gonna focus mainly on that today, um, but there is scope to do additional procedures and all types of skin surgery, uh, which, which will explore a few different uh, uh, additional procedures as well. So tell me, Ben, um, what's, what is radio frequency? Well, you can see a graph there. Uh, all I understand is radio frequency is something that we can use with Fugitate. Have you got that slide yet? Uh, it is, most people think it is uh, similar to dark army. It is very different to dark army um, in the sense that it will produce heat and it desiccates, which means that it vaporizes the tissues. And I think that's the main difference. It actually uh, vaporizes the tissue is by then uh, what happens that is actually then cuts into the tissue. So without charring the, the tissues and without causing too much heat to the surrounding tissue. And so that reduces the risk of scarring. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, has radio frequency been around for a long time? I first used radio frequency devices sometime in 2006 uh, in not so much in this cutting, but radio frequency we use it for skin rejuvenation and lifting and That's right. and of course uh, the first they are all related technology, right? Radio frequency and of course the March and uh, that was introduced I think in two hundred five two hundred six uh, for lifting. Uh, you know I don't understand the the it basically it's radio frequency. So we use sure. it for cut then uh, like removal of the dying lesions. Um, I don't think of any other device you can do it for removal. Of, um, removal of benign lesions other than cryotherapy without causing scarring and of course then they have the lifting that you have in your uh, element attachments on top of that sure sure so it's interesting you know radio frequency produces heat that it's it's the energy produces a resistance in the body and that resistance produces heat and uh, there's a number of different applications uh, for aesthetic procedures simply by stimulating heat in the body, especially in the dermis. You can um, uh, elicit a, a controlled injury, a thermal injury, and produce um, a, uh, a regeneration of collagen and elastin, and, and you can tighten tissue. Um, and in, in this case of today, though, we're gonna be talking about how to harness radio frequency uh, for the purpose of cutting, coagulating, desiccating, and fulgurating. 
Um, you know, cutting's pretty obvious and so is coagulating. All of you will know what that is. Desiccation is to vaporize. It's to um, turn, turn the water in the cells to steam. And uh, the desiccation occurs from the inside out. So it's not like the surgitron tip is sharp or hot. It's not, that's not how the, um, the, the, the mode of action takes place. Um, it's actually happening from the inside out. The waves are hitting the cells. The cells are turning to steam and, and um, vaporizing from the inside out. So it's really interesting, and I'll show you some more on that in a second. And this is um, probably the most common um, thing that you will do with, with a radio wave surgical device. Everywhere you see cosmetic mole removal or, or the removal of benign skin lesions advertised, they will be using an Elman Surgitron 90% of the time. Um, so it's a very established uh, technology for, for getting this type of result. Uh, Dr. Chan, could you, if you can see um, the slide at the moment, can you tell us a little bit about this patient and how you achieved this result? Sure. This is a typical patient that we see. Um, these are macroscopically, they are called intradermal moles. So they're different from junctional moles, which looks different, and compound moles that looks different. Um, for somebody who does skin cancer, um, you know, you, you, you may encounter someone that says, look, I've got this really big mole. Uh, on my face and I want it removed. They don't, I mean, most people, doctors will say, okay, we cut it out, refer you to a plastic surgeon. Now, um, <laughs> believe me or not, plastic surgeons and derms actually haven't caught up to this technology. I don't know why it took so long. Um, these are classic intradermal moles <laughs> where the neva cell is actually in the dermis. So they actually they, they're considered as something congenital, but when they are young, you don't see them. They're slightly uh, turning brown, and then during teenage, they raise uh, in color. And then as they get older, by about 70, the color actually disappears. And in um, it happens in Caucasian as well as in Asians. In Asians, they tend to be darker, especially this middle age. Like they, if they present um, about 70, the color is gone, but you have this bump on your on the face, it can be on other parts of the body, but I only see them on the face when they, they find it unsightly. And this guy obviously has multiple, and of course, I've got, uh, they can have one or they can have many. Um, so, first of all, macroscopically, it is diagnosed as a, um, a intradermal mole or dermal mole, as they're called. So, don't forget. Intradermal mole is actually a histological diagnosis. It's not a macroscopic diagnosis. So what happens is, because of our experience, uh, despite being Asian or skin type even five, five means uh, Indian continent, uh, that sort of patients, I've never done skin type six, which is uh, African Negroes. So I've never seen them on them either. Uh, so I do see skin type five and uh, patients of Indian continent and also Chinese Asians, uh, which is skin type four to five. Um, they're particularly, uh, they know they've been there for a long time. It didn't appear overnight. When they, see, when they present to me, they've been there for years and they haven't changed. It's slowly getting bigger. They find it unsightly. The, the thing is that most people don't know that they can be removed quite safely and quite uh, uh, well without scars. And she can only do that with radio wave surgery. There's no data, me, you can't cut them. Um, so that's the only technology they can remove it with, uh, without scar is using radio wave surgery. So uh, most doctors would then refer them to a plastics. Or if they refer to a dermatology, then the dermatology will refer to a plastics. And one option is they cut it out, right? And then when they cut it out, being an Asian yeah, and being so close to the nose area, you're definitely going to end up with a scar. And it's going to cost them even more for me to fix, to resurface the, mm -hmm. uh, the scar. So mm -hmm. it, it's just more trouble. So to remove something like that, you do need uh, almond surgery. Now, uh, I declare I have no commercial interest and I'm not aware of another, uh, another device that I can use to remove these uh, without scar. So first two steps. The first step is we cut with a, with a blade to bring it down 
um, to the level of the skin, close to the level of the skin, and then send the specimen for pathology for confirmation. Yes, it is intradermal mold. I said, yeah, I told you so. Uh, so that's the first step. And then at the same time, I use the Surgitron almond to flatten it. Now to flatten it um, is by feel. You see some of my videos on YouTube of Christian may have one. You by feel. We feel that the 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 lesion is no longer there. And then that's about it. So the patient walks in, walks out, and uh, that ends up with a scab there, which will fall off within about seven days. You don't, yeah. So seven days, and then that's it. Now you can see that in this in this video here, he uses a surgitron and uh, with a loop, right? I tend not to do that. Um, it is just uh, because it being a circular loop, you can see the patients. You can see the patient. Uh, in the picture, in the middle, ended up with a small scar, which is a hypopigmented area. That is actually a scar because uh, the tip used in this is a loop. So, which means that the angle is you can use a triangular one with a flat thing, which you got one, one of those, you can show them uh, mm -hmm. the tip. So, that will flat. This one will scoop. A new scoop, the, the deepest part of it will scoop into the deeper layer of the dermis and it creates a scar, which you see there. And um, you won't see a sky the way I do it uh, because I don't use that uh, use that technique at all. So it's a bit of training, but it's, you can see how fast it is. That took really only about three seconds and the thing falls off. So it's just a using a proper, sorry, a using a different probe and you can almost flatten it, that triangular one, you know, the flat base one. I do. So you can do the same thing. Now, just based on that, because we are on this topic, just think of a, a thick and set K now, a thick and sake, you can shave it and then you can use the surgitron to, to clean the base. Uh, so that, yeah, oh, I have on that one. Uh, you had a probe there uh, before. Yeah. Yeah, it's not typical sake. Uh, you have one with multiple probes. Yeah, that's it. Um, number four from the left. So instead of number one from the left. So that ensures you you have a flat cut rather than a scoop. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can do a sake, which you can see later on, that would actually that is one of my cases. Just give me a second. So that, that, that's a big sacrifice. Like you can shave off, you can shave it off, and then uh, I can, you can use a datomy straight off, or you can shave it off. The, sorry, not datomy. I say it wrong. Radio uh, radio surgery. So if you just shave it off, you will see that it's a pinpoint bleeding, which is an epidermal dermal junction, but you still can't get to the base. So this will recur fairly quick now. So this one, I'm using a, a, a circular probe, which, you know, you, you, is something that you just fugigate and uh, you just wipe it off the lesion. So it's fairly quick. Um, so sometimes I can use, yeah, that's, that's where you see it. Um, so it does coagulate. Uh, I'm going to come closer. It can coagulate as well. The bleeding is good because that shows me I'm in the epidermal dermal junction, which is pinpoint bleeding. So this one will clean it out safely and without me getting into the deeper dermis so there will be no scar i can use that to cause right as well if i need to so uh you don't really need to so it's a very clean very fast procedure and uh look i can shave it and it's going to bleed everywhere and then i have to uh and it will come back with this one the recurrence rate is very low because you're actually getting to the upper layer of the dermis great so what can i say is it's just so simple yeah uh, you know, I don't need to cut it. I don't need to do anything. Uh, it, it, with, yeah, it makes it just uh, make my life so easy. Great. And you did mention there that um, uh, you, this the loop tip um, is more used then for a shave as opposed to a cut. Because in uh, in, in the uh, in the in this video, you were talking about not using a circular loop because it can scoop versus yes. uh, whereas you did use a loop in that in the second video we showed but it was done in a, in a shaving technique is that right yeah uh, so this one uh, I would actually uh, I can use a blade to shave and then I'll use that uh, use that uh, triangular one yeah and touch up the piece. Great. Okay. And we'll, we'll touch base again uh, in a second on, on the different tips and what they can do. And I just wanted to cover this quickly because this is probably one of the biggest surprises that people um, 
uh, come to terms with, I guess, when they when they learn about the science of, of radio wave surgery. And the fact is that the, the tips aren't hot and they're not sharp. So it's not like it's a scalpel or it's not like a super um, hot um, uh, a tip that is that is melting through the tissue. It's not at all. It's actually heating the water within the cells to the point where it turns to steam. And the steam is dissecting from the inside out. So when the tip of a Surgitron um, uh, tip hits the skin, the radio waves are searching for the water and heating that water to the point where they vaporize and then it dissects from the inside out. So you can literally do a procedure and then put your finger on the end of the tip and, uh, and you're not gonna feel anything. Um, it, it is not going to be hot and it's not going to be sharp. Um, so that, that's just a little bit about the science um, of it. And some of the benefits now just, you know, cause there, there are a lot of different ways to um, uh, to treat uh, a mole or, or, or lots of different ways to do skin surgery. So, so you know, what are the benefits of using a Surgitron or radio wave? I mean, let's, let's just get down to brass tacks. You know, Ben, if you could enlighten us, the Surgitron is a very high frequency radio wave system at four megahertz. What does that actually mean in terms of outcomes for patients? and also operationally from the doctor's perspective, what does it improve? Okay, let's, um, it depends on where we use it. Let's talk about the most um, area where most doctors will use, which is in the, let's say skin cancer, yeah? Skin cancer cut. Uh, why, why would I use this over, um, over a blade? Um, number one is especially, especially useful if there's any lesion on the scalp that I need to cut because it coagulates it as well. So I don't have uh, another three pairs of hands trying to stop the bleeding. And if I need to, if there's a bleeder, I can still use that to coagulate the bleeder, especially on the scalp. Now, if I have the area that I've marked out, uh, say a four millimeter margin that I need to uh, cut out a skin cancer, this, this um, device, this handle that I've got, this piece of uh, device I've got in my hand, it's very precise. It's so precise that you know when you do a cut, you sort of you can't really follow uh, exactly the. It takes many years to get exactly the uh, elliptical shape that you want to follow, which you've drawn and you're going to cut, right? Even a knife will go uh, zigzag somehow and not that precise. Whereas this one is so precise because there's no speed involved. You just do as much as slow as fast as you want. It is so precise in the fact that you can trace the outline accurately four millimeters as you drawn as you plan before the surgery it is so precise okay and then of course once once you've mapped out the outline of the lesion you you cut it elliptically the outline then when you lift up the skin as one would use instead of a knife to cut the or uh, use a blunt dissection to cut the uh, the fat underneath when you want to remove the skin cancer because you do need to get into the subcutaneous layer. So you pick it up and you just use uh, this device, the radio frequency, and you just uh, cut the bottom. So again, it makes it fairly bloodless. The whole thing is fairly bloodless feel. And it is, so it cuts and coagulates and very precise. And that's the main thing. So here's the look and setting that's all. So that's the that's the advantage of it. I don't know whether you've seen you can pass forward. That's the local and setting. So this is a can remember. So this is how precise it is. Look at the tip. So I can control the tip to precisely the area. And if you're going to use a knife, you're going to bleed anyway. I mean, this is a guy with a lot of blood vessels. You can see how precise it is. Uh, I can map it out the way I want it. And you can see the the fumes as part of you. Uh, that's the vaporizing of the tissues so not much bleed there, day and you pick it up and you can see the underneath uh, how elegant is that uh to gradually peel it off yeah um, and the, uh, the the coagulation is specific to the size of the tip you're using so as as you can see there we're using a very very thin needle 
So the degree of coagulation that you will uh, obtain from that is going to be small. Whereas if you were using a thicker, bigger, or, or even if you were using a, a ball tip or a blunt tip, you would have much more surface space to coagulate. So the, the, the Surgitron's ability to coagulate is specific to the, the, the type of tip you're using for the monopolar. Uh, but you also have bipolar forceps, just like you'd be used to with your hyphricator. And um, Ben, I, I just had a question here going back to the um, mole removals, uh, and I'll let this play while we while we discuss this. So, so a couple of things. Um, settings, uh, we've gone through a couple of tip choices, so settings and, and charging. So uh, how we charge for how we charge for these treatments and also uh, what settings we use. So could okay. you, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the setting first. You, on that thing, you have a, you have a cut, cut and coat and coat. So I tend to just use a cut and coat. So that's a setting, you've got three lock setting there. Cut, cut and coat or coat. So I cut it there. Uh, in terms of the power setting, you go, uh, here you are. So here's the benign lesion. You can use that as a cut as well. Uh, you go as low as possible, and if it's not enough, you turn it up. Now this is one of the. Again, you will not, you will not scar this patient because you are not deep at all. You're just on the surface, and uh, so this one is using a circular one. Uh, you you get used to it. Look, it's not fussy whether you use circular or the triangular one. Uh, the circular one is being used most. So that is removing the base and uh, not in deep into the dermis, so it won't scar. So coming back to the, the setting, you go as low as possible when you start, uh, and then you turn up as you require. So mm -hmm. you have a, they're turning up higher to the to to just adequate. You don't want to turn it too high and then turn it down. You want to turn it down and then turn it up. Have I answered the question? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think less is more. So absolutely. So so on your Surgitron, and I've got one right here. I'm just going to bring up my webcam to make sure you can see it. So, so this is the Surgitron. Cleaning up the base, uh, cleaning up the, uh, the the base, and removing any uh, removing any residual tissues. Like sometimes you remove, the, remove a warty lesion uh, when you use a knife. It's not possible to do that. It's not possible. Only this device. In fact, I've just done. Uh, it's not possible to do that. Uh, clean it up using knife. Okay, so this is uh, this is essential if you want to do this sort of work. This is so essential. Look, there's no scarring at all because it is into the upper layer of the dermis. Yeah. So once you uh, so you can see, although he's using a circular one, how accurate he is, he's just lightly touching it. He's not even in there. He's just like I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's a few microns away uh, because it vaporizes the tissue. He's not even touching it. So this one is just maybe just making sure that. Uh, you know, just finishing touch. Yeah, finishing touch. So it's very, very creative and artistic work um, with the Circuitron and absolutely less is more. The device is so powerful, it's like a hot knife through butter and you don't get any resistance from the tissue like you would with a knife. So power settings are very important. So uh, for this procedure we're watching here, his Surgitron will be set to something like three or four and it'll be on a cut coag mode or a blend mode. So um, Karen, you're gonna be looking at um, taking the lesion or the bulk, debulking the lesion on a power setting of say eight or 10, eight to 12. And then when you're refining the area here with a broad needle or a ball tip, you're gonna be down to four, five, six on your Surgitron. And it's gonna be based on, on the interaction with the tissue uh, will let you know what, what you need to do. So if you're struggling, if it's resisting, you need to turn it up a little bit, or if it's sparking, you need to turn it down. Uh, but generally speaking, with your Surgitron, you're not really gonna do much above 18 or 20 on the power chart, and it goes up to 100, right? So it just shows you how powerful this machine is. Um, but in answer to your question there, to debulk, it's about a 10 and to refine the area it's about a four um and charging ben like if you if if this was your procedure that we've just watched here you the the patients come in with this uh particular skin lesion and has left with um excuse me and has left with 
this type of result, um, you know, what can a patient expect to pay for that? Uh, any lesion that I remove with a surgeon, especially intra, um, intradermal mole, is eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred on yeah. on the face or anywhere? <laughs> Uh, not for skin cancer, but for, for the face, yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing, I should increase my price, been charging that for the last 10 years. Yeah, okay. And I've got a price chart in here. We can have a look at it in a sec. And, um, you know, I think it's going to relate to the type of business you have. You know, if you're a, uh, if you're a cosmetic business and that, that those are the services you're offering and the person is come in specifically for a scarless removal of a skin lesion then absolutely $800 is is absolutely spot on and and her, what was the alternative you mentioned it before refer to a dermatologist refer to a plastic surgeon and they're still not going to get the same result because they're not using a surgitron so this should be done in primary care it can be done in primary care provided uh, the lesion is correctly assessed of course and uh, the Elman Surgitron will enable you to manage that skin lesion right there and then. Um, these are just a couple of examples, and these are very standard examples. So they're not good outcomes, great outcomes, they're just normal. This is just what the Surgitron does. And All right. I think the alternative is to see a flat six because I've compared the prices, and they have to see them, and they will still end up. Uh, costing patients 600 to 800 with a scar. So right. it's up to them. Okay, and I've taken this chart. Um, this seems to be a very reasonable and consistent way of charging for these procedures. Um, uh, it's, it's normally structured by uh, face and body, so separating lesions on the face and the body, charging more for the lesions on the face and having a tiered approach to charging for them because often you're removing more than one lesion. So that's just an example and feel free to use that example and just alter the prices as you see fit. And please guys, uh, a lot more people have joined since we started. If you want to ask a question, just hit up the, um, the icon in the corner there with the comment uh, bubble and the question mark. Just click on that, type in a question and, and we'll bring it into the discussion. Please do, let's make it interactive. Um, in terms of the price, like the patient that you saw with so many on the face, uh, typically that would be a two thousand eight hundred dollar job. Right. Okay. So I, don't, I, don't, I stopped counting how many already. So you know, it'll be a two thousand eight hundred dollars. So uh, yeah, for to remove so many. Yeah. And just in answer, Al, Ali, good to good to see you on here, Doctor Zahedi. Thank you for joining us. You can also use uh, the the our the Sinusure Tempshore system with both both Akshay and and Ali who are on this webinar have those devices. Those devices contain a 300 watt Surgitron inside, so that's Sinusure's latest device, the Tempshore, um, and it also has a Surgitron inside. This the tips are the same, so it's the same. Everything's the same. Um, same tips, same applications. It's almost like your Tempshore is a Surgitron. So everything we're showing here that relates to tip choice and um, power settings applies to your Tempshore as well. Um, and how about the rate of recurrence, Ben? You know, on on these removals, um, do you get many you know patients coming back with recurrence, and and how do you manage? A, a recurred lesion in terms of um, do they pay for it for it again? Okay, for intradermal moles, we, I do see a recurrence rate of maybe ten or twenty percent, like two or three years down the track. And I tell them that you know when they come up, it won't be as big. I don't normally charge them again. It's like treat them like going to uh, getting your teeth uh, denture, uh, those uh, Invisalign or something. You know, you just take care. But to do it is like to redo it, it won't be as much as just touching up. It'll take another five seconds, honestly, once it's local and static, so it's no big deal. I just do it because you get such good results and patients are so happy and it's your piece of work. So I don't bother fighting again because really the touch up means it's just just slowly, slowly just touching it, uh, you know? Okay. It's so fast. Great. So just, just bear with me. I'm just going to, we're now going to move into some of the more uh, peripheral procedures that you can do with the device. 
I'm just going to remove the volume here and then start it off. So, so you can do much more with a Surgitron than just benign skin lesion removal. Um, you can use it for all types of skin surgery and we're going to look at a few additional procedures now. So Ben, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here? Okay, that's why we tried it with a double eyelid. Um, you know, the, of course the patient has had uh, unique training for that. Uh, you do you do need to mark it up. Uh, marking it is another training altogether, and then you just cut. Um, so Surgitron, uh, one of the best use I reckon, which is understated, is actually blepharoplasty. Now, for those who are who are familiar with aesthetic medicine, is a is a thing called the plasma technology. So it should be used similar to that, and it's so little risk. Um, you get. Oh, so this is this is really cut blepharoplasty. plastic. Oh, previous before this one. Yeah, this. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Uh, I'm just going to try and find yeah. the. Oh, no, no, this one. I'm just going to try and find uh, the plasma. Yeah, you had that one. This one. This one. Keep it. This one. Sorry. Uh, this one. This one. Yeah, this one. Okay. So this is a perfect uh, floral candidate for using this uh, device, but you will not use it as a cut. You use it as a plasma. Sort of, uh, I've got a picture there somewhere. Oops. You I've got it. Uh, yeah, so so you use it as that. You use it as a dot 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 form. Um, I mean, this is this is amazing. Um, you you use that with local anesthetic, of course. Yeah. So we, it's not that hard to train someone just to do it. It's, you just see where the redundant skin is. Uh, redundant skin is, and she's got plenty of redundant skin, and. It is a quick procedure. It will probably, after a local anesthetic, it will probably take about five minutes on each side. And the results almost guaranteed. And there are no side effects regarding this. And you can always do a touch up if they want to. So uh, where the market is for this one is actually elderly, uh, elderly um, sort of patients with very thin skin, a lot of skin redundancy. They get the immediate results, right? So what is the alternative? The alternative is to have a surgical blepharoplasty by ophthalmologist, which is uh, we need to cut, is totally unnecessary. So this one aesthetically is because she has a lot of redundant skin. They get immediate results within uh, within uh, like immediately after procedure, you see the sky, the eyes lifted up. Yeah, you open up your eyes. And there's not much recovery time. You expect the swelling to be there worse the next morning. And then after that, uh, four or five days and goes away. Uh, so you see immediate results and this aftercare is just applying a bit of local anesthetic, uh, so antiseptic cream and that's about it. Within some days, you'll be fully healed. And uh, all the gap will drop off. Is there any, um, like what are the protocols in terms of the distance between uh, spots and how many spots are you, are you coagulating? Uh, it depends on where the where the redundant where the redundant skin is, and it can be about two millimeters apart. And all it is is desiccating the tissue, the skin, excess skin. You can see that it's going after the lines. It's going after. You can't do anything wrong. You can't do. You can't overdo it. Let me put it this way: you can't overdo it. The only risk is that okay, patients say, oh, one side is better than the other. You just touch it up exactly the same. You can't overdo this sort of thing because it's not a cut. It's just uh, cauterizing or. That's right. or Getting the excess skin, yeah. so they immediately lift from that, and aesthetically is very, very pleasing. Okay, that great. Those. And that that procedure or this procedure is done using the broad needle with the coag option. So you're hitting your blue coag button on the handpiece with a broad needle with a power setting of four, yeah, and you're so going to check the resistance. And maybe up to five or down to three, depending. Yes, that's the same probe we use for xanthelasmas and also uh, it's actually a blunt tip, right? So it's it actually is. a thick blunt tip. So we use that for xanthelasmas and syringomas. Yes. Okay, great. So um, what about coagulating facial or dealing with vascular lesions? And In fact, uh, Robin will be going out later. Uh, and telangiectasias. Okay, we use the same. This one is using a finer tip because the vein is so small. 
uh, it disappears in front of your eyes. So uh, it's a bit painful. So the, the, this one are just tiny telangiectasis. Uh, there's no scar, just a bit of scab. It, it basically like authorizes the, the veins in front of you. Um, so these are for veins that you can see uh, well. Uh, so there are certain nasal veins that are bigger, so you do need to use that blunt tip again. Uh, in terms of hemangioma, uh, cherry and chin hemangioma, I would use the blunt tip like the one we had before. And uh, it, again, it vaporizes in front of your eyes, it just disappears. So it may have to be a local anesthetic. This this is quite, this is a bit painful, yeah? <laughs> yeah, bit. I'd say local anesthetic for, for sure. Topical anesthetic, yeah. Okay, great. And um, what about surgical blepharoplasties? Are you using your Surgitron to actually do an upper lid blepharoplasty? I used to do this whole thing, but now uh, I no longer do this. It's basically, again, uh, instead of a knife, you use this to get because you can see how precise it is. Have a look how precise the incision, yeah. So you don't need to do blepharoplasty, uh, but this is how precise it is. You can uh, you can use it as a cut because you can outline exactly what I show you, and you know it, the the doctor draws the the plans the surgery draws it and then design the lift they want, and then you just cut it, and underneath it there's no bleeding, so you just stitch it. But same procedure. It's basically a cut. Yeah. Okay, great. So guys, we've talked about um, the use of the Surgitron and radio wave surgery for cosmetic mole removals, uh, for skin cancer excisions, for blepharoplasties, uh, for um, plasma blepharoplasties. You can use it for uh, labiaplasties because you are effectively cutting and removing the redundant tissue. Um, well, you can also treat uh, vascular lesions and telangiectasias. So there is a wide variety of things you can do with the Surgitron. Uh, and it's from a medical perspective, you can also do all of your flaps and grafts and, and incisions uh, as well. Um, and the Surgitron also has uh, cautery forceps. So really your scalpel and your um, hyphricator uh, shouldn't really have any purpose um, uh, after you 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 have a surgitron. Um, so um, just just finally, guys, um, uh, Dr. Dr. Ben Chan runs the Aesthetics and Skin Institute, and they are the only uh, provider of an online surgitron course that's independent of Sinusure. Um, so this is the only Surgitron course that I know of, and it was really, uh, it was the initiative of Dr. Ben Chan to create this. So Ben, do you just want to quickly tell us what is the Aesthetics and Skin Institute and how can people access this course? Okay, why I started this was because I found that the, a lot of things I wanted to learn in aesthetic medicine, which is a broad term, is not being, it did not cater for my own needs. There are basically two streams there. One is the injections, which is Botox and fillers. And again, um, just briefly mention about that stream. Um, I took about a year to complete a module on cadaver dissection and, and uh, writing up a whole course on anatomy of different areas for injection. So it's now a resource being used by uh, expert trainers in UK, USA and Asia, uh, because when they teach injections, one of the things lacking is actually anatomy. And that is so crucial. And whatever anatomy lessons or textbooks out there, they are lacking because it's a 2D, two-dimensional one uh, presentation. So I've taken uh, the liberty of videoing cadavers and getting 3D computerized program and showing, illustrating how fillers and Botox should be done. So that's one part of it. It's now an online resource, and we don't encourage anyone to, to uh, try to learn how to inject it just by watching the videos. Uh, so it still requires... Uh, hands on. Whereas the other part of aesthetic medicine, a big part of it is skin. And when you talk about skin, my God, where do you start? Um, I was a dermatology based uh, trainee. So where do we start? You start by understanding skin science. Now uh, I'm talking very fast because I don't want to take up your lunchtime. Uh, skin science is as we, we were taught about skin, but we were not taught 
about skin science the way we aesthetic medicine want to talk about. So we need to say, okay, skin science, what does that matter? Well, it matters because uh, when you talk about peels, when you talk about aesthetic, uh, having good skin, uh, having scars, you need to understand the four cells that we are talk, talk about there, which is the keratinocyte, side, the melanocyte, side, and the fibroblast. Right, just briefly, strum corneum is to stop absorption of all your moisturizers and the keratinocytes why we, we lose the shine and, and the fibrocytes that uh, uh, Christian talked about is where they produce the elastin, the collagen, the skin tightening. Well, you, if you have, can't remember all those, then the technology is going to be like uh, so of where it all fits in. Uh, you know, like skin tightening, when you talk about skin tightening, it's actually talk about uh, getting the, uh, stimulating the fibrinose, uh, fibroblast, uh, fibroblast so that they produce collagen and elastin uh, with a radio frequency device. So it, the skin science starts from there and again brings it back to essentials of uh, the skin depth because the facial skin is only about two millimeters. And that consists of the epidermis, the upper dermis, and the deeper dermis. Every time when you do a procedure like this, you need to ask yourself, benign lesion, where does the skin lesion sit? Is it in the epidermis or is it in the dermis? When you try to scoop a thing, uh, like using the circular uh, tip, uh, you scoop into the deeper dermis and you end up with a scar. What is a scar? A scar is a definition. It's an area of the dermis that's devoid of the appendages, that means you wipe out the hair follicles and that's been replaced by fibrous tissue. So skin science does matter so that you don't go and scoop it out and create scars. So it helps you to think uh, what we were taught in anatomy uh, when we were in medical school. Anyway, that's one aspect of it. And of course, it's, um, then there's, of course, there's cosmetic dermatology. You need to identify what the milia is, what the mole is. Uh, it gets more and more complicated. And then there's thread lift. They all relate. They're all interrelated and lasers. And uh, before you go and buy a laser, please go and get a surgery trunk first um, before you get into all that. So all the modules are online. And it is the first, I believe, is the best platform globally, uh, all under one roof. And if it's not there, I will make it. That includes plasma, surgitron, uh, threads, etc. It's complete. All the complete modules now that those modules are being used as a reference by trainers globally. Great. It's available online. Thank you, Ben. So, um, so it's a very comprehensive um, educational platform that includes the surgitron. Um, I didn't even approach Ben about putting this on there. He he took the initiative and figured that the surgery trom was a worthwhile um, uh, category to to hold education on, and and so now it appears on there. So anyone with a surgery tron or thinking of buying one, uh, you can access that at the Aesthetics and Skin Institute. So guys, we've run a little bit over time, so I just want to close out by saying thank you very much. Uh, we've retained everyone. You're all still there. A lot of you are probably doing online shopping. And I just want to say thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're going to continue to bring you educational and promotional events like this, uh, streamed live to your mobile phone while you're sitting on the couch. And, um, and I think this is a really great tool to engage with people. So thank you for joining us. If you're looking at the Surgitron, if you want to discuss the Surgitron with me, just put yes in the comment box. So just click on the comment icon with the question mark in it and just type yes and I'll give you a call and we can discuss the Surgitron. Um, so just finally, thank you very much, Dr. Can ben Chan. Absolutely. Okay, the reason I, I, I wrote that this uh, particular module is because I feel that Surgitron is very unique and in certain conditions you cannot do without this module. Like I don't write about lasers, I wrote this especially because in cosmetic dermatology, in removal of xanthelasma, uh, syringomas and, and benign lesions and cosmetic mold removal, this this technology is so unique and really any cosmetic physician should be able to do it because you really don't want to scar a patient and and the alternative is surgery is totally unnecessary and that's why i write it uh, that's why i wrote up this module uh, one more thing if any of you have any questions uh, christian will give you my contact number you can contact me direct regarding how to operate this or any question at all i love questions thank you you know what i just you know what i love i love the fact that you know i do a lot of live workshops a lot of people on this webinar have attended those workshops and the doctors that i work with including yourself, Dr. Ben Chan, are always so generous 
Um, no one ever has a commercial interest in doing this. Uh, it stems from a deep passion for skin and aesthetics and the devices that Sinusure have. And, uh, you know, and then you go ahead and make a comment like that, that the people on this webinar can contact you directly um, for, for advice and education. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ben Chan, for everything you do and for being so generous. And uh, thanks for talking with us today. Um, and thank you, everyone on the line. It's been wonderful, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Now we've got that awkward moment where I don't know how to close the webinar. <laughs>